Pat Barnard, Group Managing Editor for TMCNet, coming to you from IT Expo East 2011 here in Miami, and I'm joined by Jose Landivar, Director of Business Development for Elastics. Hi, Jose. How are you doing? Hi, how are you doing? Thanks for coming to the show. Thank you. Thank so why don't you start off by telling me a little bit about what Elastics does. Great. So yeah, Elastics, we are a uh, developer of uh, web interface basically for Asters, which is the leading um, IBPBX software right. out there. And uh, what we try to do is to make it such an easy to use interface so anybody can really go out there and start installing their own PBXs without having to spend millions of dollars in it. Mm -hmm. So it has the, a feature set that is comparable to any other of the leading um, uh, makers of equipment at a much lower price right and uh, what we aim for is to always try to beat them on some of their features mm -hmm. okay great and uh, tell me about the markets that you guys play into so we've uh, grown out of uh, Ecuador right in South America and so we have a stronghold in in Latin America currently so mm -hmm. South America Central America and the Caribbean we have started to make inroads in the US uh -huh. and uh, our aim now is to embark in growing globally uh -huh. both in Europe and Asia Right. Currently, uh, we've reached a million downloads already, mm -hmm. and uh, we are well on our way to, uh, later on this year, releasing a uh, 3.0 version of our software mm -hmm. uh, that will hopefully allow us to get into those, uh, into those markets. Right, okay. And you guys work with uh, numerous uh, key strategic partners in the open source telephony space. Right. You mentioned some of them before, I think Digium. Uh, also uh, Sangoma, what, what are right. some of the other ones? Yeah, so what we try to do uh, in, in particular is to provide an ecosystem of s solutions and uh, uh, because of that our, our software has uh, now uh, is now able to interact with many of the products that are out there currently for supporting this type of technologies. So right. one of them being you know, Sangoma, Digium, Zorcom, mm -hmm. um, there's many, Redphone, there's many other type of technologies that, that are out there and we try to embrace all of them and make sure that we can all uh, play together mm -hmm. to provide a consistent solution out to the customers. Right, okay, great. So tell me a little bit more about how the business model works. Suppose um, I'm a small to medium sized business operating in a South American country. How do I find out about you guys? And then tell me about the, how the process, the go to market process works in terms of, um, you know, how you make the sale, right. and then how you pre-configure the box for me and all that right, kind of stuff. Right, right. So, so the, the interesting piece is that because it's, it's open source, we, we tend to have a very distributed business model where we have uh, partners in many regions of the world, many countries. Mm -hmm. And what uh, we do is when the customer has a need, they, sometimes they come to us directly because uh, they want to go to the, the maker of the brand. Right. And they'll come to us and they'll ask us for a solution. And mm -hmm. what we'll do is we'll work together with their local uh, partner that we have there to provide the best solution for them. Right. Once that's agreed, we, that may be uh, Elastics in a box complete solution. Mm -hmm. um, it could be training, it could be support uh, programs that we have. Um, so what basically what the customer ends up seeing is I want a solution and I'm getting a solution. Mm -hmm. They don't see I want a solution and because I want it to be a lower cost for me, I need to buy a a server from here, a card from here, and you know, hire this person to do it. Right. So th the idea is, let's uh, model ourselves uh, uh, the way that the industry has been already doing it, uh -huh. which is a solution base. Right. Okay. And on the logistics side side of things, how does that work with, with regard to demand and, and that's supply a great and question. distribution? Yeah. Right. That's a great question. So what we do uh, now is we uh, manufacture products in the U.S. Mm -hmm. out of uh, Mountain View, California. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so um, when it has to do uh, with uh, integration of cards in a box for building that solution and delivering it to the customer, mm -hmm. we do that out of California. Mm -hmm. And what um, we do is we take even the order, we build it, we have the systems built, but we configure it depending on the accessories that you want. Right. We test it, and then what we will go one step farther. The partner will tell us how they want it configured. Right. So that when they receive it, they don't even have to do that step. Right. Yeah. All they'll do is go and put it in and start working on it. Right, right. And the turnaround time, I would imagine, is probably pretty good. The reason why I say that is because I know a lot of these solutions are getting to be more and more plug and play. Right? That's I mean, right. Uh, you, we see solutions out there that come with uh, Ethernet already pre-integrated. Um, you know, you can get the gateway already pre-integrated. That's right. You know, you can configure these things rapidly. Basically, right. whatever way you want to. You've got a call center, you need to support a call center. 
right? And, that's right. And, and that's so it's so quicker and easier for you guys to be able to package the solutions, the tailored solutions that your customers that's need. That's exactly right, yeah. And so it depends, really. We, if you uh, want a basic system, we can ship it out normally. We do it within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. um, if you uh, would like something a little bit more, let me put you an example, give you an example. Uh, some customers would want a complete solution that is uh, fault tolerant. That would be two servers and a device that routes the calls between the two servers. One, one falls down, the other one comes back right, up. Sure. In those cases, for instance, we will configure the complete clustering solution for them right. and we'll ship it. So right. that by the time they get it, all, the, all they have to do is it's plug and play. Normally that will take some time for them to tinker, tinker with and, and make it work, right. but that goes out of the box. So for in those cases, it may take 48 hours or 72 hours, but right. we're normally pretty, pretty fast. And also being in the US, uh, as you mentioned, logistics wise, really has had a benefit for us because we're able to serve the whole US market and, and really anywhere. Uh, shipping from the US is very, very uh, easy to do. Right, right. Um, speak a little bit to the, the to the steady growth of adoption of Asterisk, uh, particularly, especially in the enterprise space, but also down in the SMB space mm -hmm. uh, as well. Actually, I got that reversed. I meant in the SMB space, and but also in the enterprise space as well. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, it's been incredible. Uh, really, Asterisk uh, has grown everywhere, and uh, many, many people are preferring it over solutions that you know have been there for many, many decades. And and the thing that that I want to stress is. Elastics in particular, we have seen in about uh, two to three years, um, one million downloads. And you know, when we started, it was just you know, maybe a couple of downloads every week. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, the way, and the reason why we believe that that has happened is because people are starting to get more um, comfortable with the idea that the being open source doesn't mean that it has to be bad, hard, or you know, very, very difficult, demanding time-wise. Right. So um, people are getting more open, and even I IT managers in enterprises are starting to realize that maybe if they put in a little bit of investment, getting training, getting trained on the solution, they are going to be able to offer to their corporations much lower total cost of ownership, right. um, much better feature sets. Right. Um, just to give you an example, there's a large, cor large corporation that we've worked with. Slowly, they started putting in some of their countries where they see the 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 telephone systems as a cost center, not a right. revenue producing right. um, uh, investment, they started saying, well, because this is a cost center, let's start putting asterisks there. Let's start putting elastics in those countries. Right. Sure. And that's what we ended up doing. Makes sense. But all of a sudden now it's turning into, well, now we should we should really think of replacing the whole thing. Yeah, because they see the value of it exactly. in terms of the feature sets it can push out and the fact that it can do all the same things that most proprietary exactly. solutions. Exactly, exactly. So it's a little bit of a, of a battle to get people to convert. But once you're there, right. nowadays it's becoming a lot, a lot easier for people to understand right. the value. Right, right. What are you seeing with regard to adoption to free versus, ver, uh, versus commercial license ver, uh, versions? Uh, you're probably all dealing almost pre predominantly with commercial, uh, is that correct? Yeah, well, uh, you mean uh, of the of software yes. based yeah, of yeah. Well, you know, really, I, I feel that there's a space for paid versus unpaid. Really, the business model um, it depends on, on you know, how you want to structure it and, you know, and your market. Right. But to me, uh, we should all be aiming towards uh, hitting that higher end space, towards uh, moving up in being a, a true good competitor to Cisco, to um, Avaya. Right. Um, I think we should not get into the discussion of um, you know whether this particular distribution is better than, my, better than yours, and I, I think we should look at the bigger piece of the pile that is you know, this huge elephant in the room. That's right. where we need to go. Right. Yeah. And the reason why I bring up the commercial versus the the free version is just because a lot of uh, organizations. Uh, they do have trepidation about making yeah. this migration, and one of the main concerns is reliability. I mean, yeah. we just got through saying it's really basically a mission critical thing, but yeah. at the same time, they don't want to make a big investment in it. Yeah. Um, and that's what—that's really what the commercial yeah. license version is all about. It's battle hardened, it's proven, it's yeah. tested. So that's part of the yeah. Reason no, and, that. and it's yeah. and it's true. And actually, one of the things that it's embedded in the question is. Uh, a lot of customers will actually go for a paid version of something, whatever that is, simply because their perceived the, uh, preconception is that uh, it delivers it's more value. Exactly, because <laughs> yeah. I'm paying for it. Yeah. Um, uh, but the truth is that that for us, at least, even though it's an open source version, and we don't, we actually don't 
have a paid version, okay. but we just do um, uh, an open source version. Okay. Uh, and, and, and the truth is that we are not any less responsible for our product right. because we are open source. Right, right. So we just try to, we, we always try to be responsible for what we do and then you know, if we need to make sure that we support some customers, we, we, we do that. Okay, all right, great. Great, thanks very much for your time. Uh, we've been Thank talking you. to Jose Landivar, uh, Director of Business Development for Elastics. Thanks again, Jose, for your time. My pleasure.